Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. We hope you enjoy listening to this podcast of St. Louis on the Air, brought to you by University College at Washington University. With undergraduate and graduate programs, part-time, evening, and online. University College at Washington University, offering world-class education within reach. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. With me now in studio is Brent Jones, our data visual specialist. He'll be telling us about a security aspect of the vice president's visit that most of us don't know much about. Traffic gets disrupted uh, on the ground and above the ground, Brent, when a, a dignitary like this comes to town. That's right. Uh, the, what a lot of people may not know is that the FAA puts in place uh, what's called a temporary flight restriction over uh, various uh, dignitaries whenever they go anywhere. Uh, so around the president and vice president and for Pence's visit here yesterday, there were uh, several of those in place over St. Louis. What does that mean, that no planes fly anywhere near uh, these people? Uh, that's the idea is to keep out planes that they're not um, they're not sure about or they don't know the intentions of. So there are exceptions for regularly scheduled flights, um, for police operations, medical flights, and that sort of thing. It's mainly to keep out planes that are just sort of the general aviation aircraft that may not uh, file flight plans or drones, things like that. Things they're not sure what the intent is. How how broad an area do these uh, restrictions cover? So it, it depends on uh, basically what the FAA decides. Uh, for Pence's visit, it was three nautical miles. Um, and just as a, a visual of, of what that re- might represent, if you center that over the Art Museum in Forest Park, say, uh, it would stretch from Grand Center on the east to McKnight and Clayton on the west and from Normandy uh, on the north, Normandy High School on the north to Ted Drews on Chippewa on the south. So it's a pretty broad area. Um, the president gets usually gets a larger one. Um, that one can be 10 nautical miles or even more. So it's a pretty wide range. Is traffic in any way disrupted at uh, Lambert, for instance, with any of this? So if, if there were general aviation flights, it, it may, but there are exceptions for the commercial flights and things like that. Um, it's also important to note that for Pence's visit, um, the TFRs were limited to 3,000 feet or below. So it's really for planes that are um, not sort of the commercial overflights that you that you typically think of. And the duration of these uh, temporary restrictions? They're usually uh, pretty tightly constricted to when the person is is visiting an area. Um, yesterday, there were, I think, uh, three or four different ones, and they were ranged from about an hour and a half to about three hours, I think, depending on how long he was going to be in place. So um, it, it really depends on the event. The FAA has pretty wide latitude to decide um, what they need to do to keep the area safe. You know, I think of uh, the, the helicopter traffic, for instance, at, to places like Barnes Hospital. Uh, that, that's fairly active. They keep fairly busy. What happens to that kind of traffic? That's right. Um, they, again, there, there, there can be exceptions for medical flights and, and police flights and things like that. Um, so those, those tend to uh, get around these. It's mostly for planes and other aircraft that, that the FAA isn't sure um, why they're there or, or what they're doing. And what happens to the, uh, the, the pilot of a, a small plane who comes into these areas uh, is not an exception. So usually um, pilots are supposed to check for these things before they take off and, and along the route. So they're supposed to know. Um, there can be punishments of, of up to a year in federal prison, $100,000 fines, loss of your pilot's license, things like that. So um, they do uh, – they are pretty strict in, in enforcing these things. Yeah. And how far in advance of the president's visit is the word spread that this is going to be a restricted area? So often they will let people know that they're planning to have one in place, um, sometimes even up to a week in advance. Um, You may know sort of in general there's likely to be one on this day. Um, But they often wait until a few days beforehand to put in the specifics um, because it is so tightly uh, constrained to the schedule. Brent, you are our drone pilot here at St. Louis Public Radio. Drones must be affected by these restrictions as well, right? 
That's right. The, the, the drones are definitely uh, some of that traffic that gets affected. Um, pretty much for drones, if there's a TFR in place, we don't fly because uh, we're not supposed to fly above 400 feet, let alone 3,000. So um, that, that's really what I'm looking out for is just if there's one there, um, that's not a place where we can go. And how are you notified? Uh, you, you can, there are various websites where you can check to see where these things are. And some of the software for the drones now actually checks for you and, and, um, will even restrict you from physically prevent you from flying the drone in that area. So, um, you are, you are responsible as a licensed pilot with the FAA for checking to see whether or not one of these exists. All right. Anything you want to add about this, uh, this whole issue of restricted flying? Uh, they're in place over over things like sports stadiums and and um, outdoor outdoor sports and events. Um, they they're put in place for all kinds of things. So it's not restricted to um, to just uh, government officials or anything like that. These are actually um, fairly common. Why would they put one over over Bush Stadium, for instance, during a Cardinals game? Sure. So they they just don't want planes or or anything um, endangering people in the stadium. There have been events of. of of drones flying into stadiums where there are sporting events, and um, you just don't don't really know what's going to happen there. So they've put these in place to try to restrict that uh, try to restrict that traffic. Well, thanks for uh, Brent for filling us in on something most people know very little about, if anything. Sure, thanks. Good, for having to, me. good to talk to you again, Brent Jones of St. Louis Public Radio, our data visual specialist. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, ninety point seven KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.